Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to our newest edition here at WVF Sports called Stags in the Studio. My name is Andrew Jamison. I'm the assistant sports director here at WVF 88.5 FM, Fairfield Student Radio. I'm thrilled to be joined by Michael Kelher, a.k.a. Big Mike, who has experience working with uh, Stag Sports Network and has um, been to many women's lacrosse games. And most importantly, our guest today, number 30, Elizabeth Toludo from Westchester, Pennsylvania, mm-hmm. attack slash midfield. <laughs> That's yeah. at least what the website says, yeah. so we'll go with that. Um, thanks for joining us today, first off. Of course, thanks for um, having me. Just wanted to get insight on, like, what's the overall vibe of the team right now? You know, you just picked up a huge win against um, Niagara after being tied mm-hmm. at half. You know, a dominant second half, which obviously carries over some momentum. So how's the team feeling right now? Yeah, our team definitely feels um, very confident in our play every single game. We're kind of just going into um, every game practice, whatever that might be, just with the target on our back we know that we're kind of the hunted and we know that um, a lot of teams kind of want to take us down so we just go into every game like with the with confidence and we want to um, just keep pushing we want to prove to everyone that um, even outside of max we're a very um, well-rounded team so I just think going into every game, we we definitely don't want to um, doubt anyone either. Like, we have Iona tomorrow. They're a pretty strong team, so we can't take anyone for granted. And our team chemistry right now is just very connected, so we just want to keep pushing through with that and just kind of prove to everyone that we're, we're a team that is going to be tough to beat. And you mentioned, um, like, the strength of schedule, mm-hmm. obviously, being especially out of conference. Um, two um, nationally ranked opponents, U Albany and UConn, two mm-hmm. huge wins over them. Um, how did that team respond to those wins? And, you know, obviously being ranked mm-hmm. for the first time since um, 2009, how has the team responded to those national rankings and accolades? Because as we know, with winning comes recognition yep. and then um, kind of stuff like that. Yeah, so that was huge. We... Go, we have played um, both UConn and Albany, those teams kind of in the past, and we've lost them always by like um, a close game like UConn. The past couple of years, it's been like a one goal loss. So we kind of went into those games just knowing we can do it. So we didn't we didn't have any doubt in ourselves. So after getting those wins, we just kind of proved to ourselves that we are we can keep up with um, other nationally ranked teams, and that just really paid off now that we we got the chance to be ranked. So. We, it's not like we were scared going into these games. We kind of um, just knew what we wanted to prove, and we did that. So now our team morale has been very high, and we're just trying to keep that level right now. Yeah, um, you kind of mentioned this, mm-hmm. obviously, with the wins against UConn and Albany, the mm-hmm. first uh, wins against ranked teams in program history. Yeah. Um, and then, obviously, facing just before that Holy Cross and mm-hmm. a, a one-goal loss and a very tight game. Um, how have you guys been able to kind of take that momentum and take – that uh, early st- schedule that you had to face and take that momentum you gained from those two wins and kind of carry it into the, into now having a 7-1 and one record overall as you're going into conference play. Yeah, definitely. So our, our first game, Holy Cross, that was a tough game, first game of the season. We, we just didn't feel as prepared as we could have been, um, and Holy Cross gave us a really good game. So that kind of woke us up in a way. I think that loss kind of helped us realize that we can't take any team for granted. So after playing... Um, UConn, Albany, Drexel, those tough teams, we just kind of kept rolling and we had the confidence and we knew that we could um, just prove to these teams finally that we could beat them in a match. And um, that just kind of led us into conference play. Like kind of what I said earlier, we can't take any team for granted because all these teams are out to get us. But I just think beating those teams out of conference is really gave us um, the confidence and the boost we needed to go into conference. So now we're just trying to keep our heads down and, and roll and just kind of be the best we can, but also be cautious and kind of be aware that all these teams are on our on our backs to get us. So. And you mentioned like you kind of like place a target on your mm-hmm. back with you know kind of like the the accolades because you know yeah. any time a team wins a championship the following year, you know um, the opponents are going to give you the their absolute best. Mm-hmm. Like you know every game's going to be a dog fight, like a nail biter, scrappy. It's just that type of nature and mentality that goes into those games. Yeah. Um, just how has um, Coach Field placed emphasis on, mm-hmm. um, you know, she has been at the helm for in her ninth season now. Um, you know, obviously back to back to back to back to back mm-hmm. um, championships. You know, one championship alone um, is hard. Every championship mm-hmm. is earned. But to do it 
to a continued pattern, how has um, Coach Field placed an emphasis on kind of just like not getting like ahead of yourselves in a mm-hmm. sense with all like the success? Yeah, definitely. So after every game, whether it's a win or loss, I think we kind of Coach Field does a great job of going over what we did well, but also what we did wrong. So even if we have a great win, like there's always things we can work on. And I think that just keeps us grounded. She's always her and um, Jenna Lindsay are just always kind of seeing how we can improve and what we could do next for every game, which is very helpful instead of kind of just um, lingering on what went really well or what what didn't go well. So we kind of just are always looking ahead. I think we're never we are satisfied with how we've been playing, but I feel like we're never fully like satisfied and, and um, in the moment we're at. So we always want to push forward, always want to keep improving. So I think that's definitely helped us just kind of look forward and not dwell on what has happened in the past. I think Lars just done a great job of kind of pushing us to prove ourselves that we can be even better. So that's been very helpful. Um, so yeah, um, as you mentioned with uh, Coach Field, mm-hmm. uh, obviously recently against with the win against U Albany, she had her 93rd career win, mm-hmm. and with uh, two wins this weekend, she would have over up to a career win 100. Mm-hmm. Um, how would that kind of feel to get those type those two wins for her to get her to career win 100, but also to do it against two of the top teams currently in the MAC? Yeah, so I I think Lars has been building um, kind of a legacy the past couple of years. We've just been improving and improving. So those two wins um, just really kind of show that she's a very strong coach. And kind of what I said earlier, we just always are pushing to be better. So I just think kind of in a way like all her hard work and all of our hard work as a team is somewhat paying off because we're getting results we wanted, but we're also getting recognition this year, which is really helping us. Um, you know, I want to go back to um, Coach Field because you know seven mm-hmm. and one um, to start the year. Um, were there any points of emphasis, you know, heading into the season? Because um, looking at your statistics, you know, in general, um, you started in four games last year, mm-hmm. um, played nineteen. However, you led the team in goals with fifty three and a total of sixty five points. So were there any, you know, points of emphasis um, from Coach Field, particularly for your game or for the team as a whole, that you kind of took to heart? Yeah, definitely. So. For my game, Laura does a great job of just kind of pushing me to always be confident and just try and be um, a strong leader for this team. But luckily with that, we have such a strong team in general, like all around in our offense. We have so many people who could score, so we don't have one person who kind of carries the weight of our team, which is huge. Um, In our Niagara game, we had like five people with three points each. Like it's kind of well spread, and we're just a very dynamic offense. We rely so much on our defense, and they've been carrying that weight as well. So Laura does a great job of kind of just making the emphasis that everyone matters and we need every single person to play a full game, and that's kind of what we've been saying before the big games. I remember before um, UConn, before Albany, before Drexel, we all said, like, it's just going to take all of us. So I think using that mindset and going into every game, just knowing we have to play as a team and play for each other just really helps us. So that's been huge this year. Uh, you mentioned um, grad mm-hmm. student, obviously, in your fifth year here. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, this team is very experienced as there are a lot of um, graduate students yeah. on this team. Um, how has, um, have you seen yourself develop more into a leader, um, in a sense, off um, on the court, like, you know, because it feels like everybody is mm-hmm. reaping the benefits, you know, whether it's looking at the team com- camaraderie, the vibes, you know, the, the overall stats, it feels like this these team's captains are just leading a ship and mm-hmm. everyone's contributing, as you said. Yep, 100 percent. I think um, this year being a fifth year, I just I feel a lot more confident in my role. And I've just kind of I've had the help because, like I said, we have seven other fifth year me and six other fifth years so there's just such a huge um help to lead the team and also the seniors have done a great job we have a ton of them so I and we've all been playing together for a while so that's really helped our team chemistry um I would say in years past we've we've had a good team chemistry but I would say this year is the best we've had so far which has really just helped us overall on and off the field yeah you mentioned um that in your fifth year uh, what mm-hmm. made you decide to come back for your fifth year here, here at Fairfield? Yeah definitely so just starting off definitely the team and the coaches in the environment like I just love being around um all of my teammates and knowing kind of a lot of other people were coming back just made it even easier um the coaches just really look after every single one of us and just want us to succeed and do well and also 
I feel like I wasn't quite done with um, the Fairfield program yet. Like we've we've had great success, but our goal is to kind of win the MAC and then win the first round of NCAA's. And I I really think like we have the team camaraderie and chemistry this year. So I think that's kind of our end goal, like to not just settle um, for the MAC championship. We want to go above and beyond. And I think just that kind of really pushed me to come back. I just I, I felt like I wasn't kind of done yet. You mentioned like a winning mm-hmm. culture, which you know this program has yeah. great history of, especially as of recent. You know, but going back to like when you were um, a freshman, why mm-hmm. did you pick Fairfield to play um, lacrosse at in the first place? Mm-hmm. That's a good question. I definitely think it was kind of the familiar aspect I had when I first visited here. So I came here. I obviously loved the school. I loved the academics that Fairfield had to offer. But I also just loved um, the team chemistry we had right f- right from when I came to visit. I wasn't even on the team, but everyone was just kind of so welcoming. And a huge part of that was because of the coaches. We just had such a good um, – the coaches had such a good mindset, and they included everyone. So that really stuck out to me. And what I really liked about Fairfield was kind of like you're, you're a person first, you're a student first, and, and you also play lacrosse. But some other schools, they really – emphasize um, how lacrosse kind of takes over your life. But I just loved how here there's a very good balance. Uh, you know, going um, back to that, so obviously we just went over um, why fair for you to switch a little bit to um, mm-hmm. you know, more of the um, personal like trajectory of your career. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you had were on the bench for um, a good portion mm-hmm. of senior, you know, as we mentioned earlier, starting in four games 19 but still very productive nonetheless as you feel like a lot of these players are and one of the things we've praised about this team time and time again is the depth I know Mm -hmm. you talked about growing in confidence and like kind of asserting yourself more of as a leader but were there any um particular areas in your game that like you know you wanted to improve upon going into the season yeah into this season um definitely wanted to just improve um just being like an overall I would say teammate in a way so I I usually tend to have a lot of goals but I wanted to focus more on assists and kind of just be a facilitator more than just um like kind of a shooter all the time so I think like this year is going really well for that I think our um like like I said again like the chemistry is huge and I think um just playing with the same people that I've been able to play with for the past kind of two years has really helped us and I definitely think my confidence has grown, which has helped me a lot because kind of like you said, like freshman, sophomore year, I didn't really play. So then junior year, kind of when I got the chance to play, I just wanted to leave it on the field. But I was still nervous because I, I wasn't used to everything yet. So I would say last year and this year is um, kind of when I just really came out of my shell a little bit and just knew like I had the potential and I wanted to get better. Um, yeah, you kind of mentioned how like your time here you've seen changes obviously mm-hmm. with players coming in and out but also with yourself how have, over your time here how have you seen your role but also how have you seen your game change as you've been here at Fairfield yeah so uh, the kind of going back to role I definitely think this year um, I've kind of stepped up a little more and been more of a leader and I just like a lot of people have been coming up to me and asking me how they can kind of get better on on the field so I do like that role and I think um, that's made me a better player and a better person and a better teammate so um, that's kind of improved and um, uh, kind of the other question was like how have you seen um, your game improve over your time here oh yeah I, I definitely think kind of going back to the confidence thing I definitely think I've gotten more confidence which has helped me just on the field to not be afraid to do things that I've done that I was afraid to do in the past so there's been a lot of times like when I kind of first started and didn't have the confidence I wouldn't take these drives or I wouldn't pass the ball but now I'm kind of taking more risks and it's paying off so I think kind of just gaining confidence and um, being a stronger player and believing in myself has helped me a lot. I want to go back to the um, Niagara game. We mm-hmm. basically like, briefly touched upon it. You know, yeah. tied 5-5 five, five, um, at halftime. You know, the team was going in, um, you know, hostile environment. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I don't <laughs> think the weather was necessarily ideal. You know, another top team in the MAC because, as we mentioned before, yep. you know a lot of all these teams are going to give you their best mm-hmm. because, you know, of the success, you know, it's just a fact of winning. Every team's going to give you um, – their best were there any um specific like locker room um halftime I guess messages or Mm -hmm. just you know kind of like play your own play like you know how to play play your brand of ball 
Yeah, so coming up there, we knew that Niagara was, like, going to be a very hard team to beat. Like, they're a very good team, well-rounded. They kind of remind me of us on offense, kind of everyone's a threat. Um, so we took the long hike up there, and we kind of said before the game, we're like, we didn't come up all the way here to lose. Like, we need to play our game. We need to not take this team for granted. We just need to um, believe in each other, stick to what we know. And that's what we did. The first quarter was a little rocky. It was kind of, We were kind of, I, I wouldn't say nervous, but we did definitely start out a little slow, and we weren't on our game. So kind of after the first quarter ended, we came together. Coach Field was like, guys, like, the first quarter's over. Mistakes are gone. Like, let's just play our game. And that's kind of when – the flip switch, we had momentum for, for the rest of the game after that because I, I think there were a little bit of nerves. People were kind of scared to mess up, but then we were like, we need just need to go all out. So I think um, kind of struggling in the first quarter helped us in a way because then we came back. We, we knew they were going to be a really hard team, so we just um, stuck to what we know and just played for each other and trusted everyone. I think that really helped us have momentum for the rest of the game. And, you know, just mentioned, like, we know, like, everyone's been firing on all cylinders mm-hmm. offensively. You know, you have 26 goals on the year. Libby Rowe recently mm-hmm. just surpassed um, 100 career um, goals. However, it was like a, a defensive mm-hmm. um, emphasis. If you held Niagara to um, two goals in that second mm-hmm. half and a season low seven total for Niagara. So um, I just want to get more insight on mm-hmm. the defensive um kind of in, insight and game plan because you know we know offense like that's what wins yep. the games however you know they say defense wins championships and mm-hmm. you know you can contribute attribute defense and um claire morris goaltender yep. who um was honestly lights out in that um second half so is there a defensive identity you see forming from this team now yeah a hundred percent i think defense is just so solid i mean ever since the holy cross game the first game of the season everyone on defense some somewhat like woke up like we woke up and realized we need every single person to play together for every game so we have huge leaders on defense we have Claire Morris like you said we have Lindsey Barnes Julia Rigolizzo Lee Myers we just have so many um um upperclassmen that just are so solid but also help out the younger players so that's been huge just having them um we have Christine Fabrizi who's our other transfer who's a midi who's just been killing it offense and defense so I think it's just such a team effort and our defense is really playing well together um so we do play a zone so if one person messes up the zone kind of falls apart and I think everyone just had each other's backs which has been huge and coach um Lindsay Epstein has just been doing such a good job kind of leading that so that's been huge for us yeah um and kind of just taking a look a look ahead uh with the MAC playoffs obviously coming up in the next mm-hmm. couple weeks um and you Fairfield battling with teams like Iona and like Canisius as we've mentioned before for that number one seed how important would it be um to host the MAC ch- or MAC semifinals in the MAC championship and potentially go for a sixth straight title mm-hmm. yeah so that's huge and that's definitely a goal our team has we would we would love to win every single MAC game. We know it's going to be a challenge, but hosting um, the playoffs and the tournament just means so much to us because we love to play for our fans, and our fans give us so much momentum. Our parents do travel to every game, so what, wherever place we're at, our parents would be there to support us. But I think just having it at at home just means so much to us, and gives us kind of the upper hand because we just know that our team has worked so hard for this and we really just want to kind of prove to our fans at home that we could um bring the championship home on the field so that's been huge no you mentioned the home record um Mm -hmm. five and oh on the year but like it's still like a lot of these games are narrow and we say like good teams great teams always find a way to win by any means necessary and it feels like there's a bend but not break Mm -hmm. mentality um showing up within this team as you know the a lot of these games are know kind of dog fights if you are like looking mm-hmm. at holy cross that was 17 16 yukon 11 9 mm-hmm. albany 15 10 but it was mm-hmm. much closer than you know the scoreboard ultimately right. um indicated so i'm just curious how um this team has just responded to you know that adversity because i know rpi um mm-hmm. uh, there was talk last year about rpi you know not being as high as you would have hoped because obviously you know being in the mac you know a mid-major conference we know like some Ivy League schools like mm-hmm. they are up there and 
note with success comes win, you know, national recognition. However, um, how has the team just responded to adversity as a whole and, you know, kind of like a chip on your shoulder yep. in a sense, if you will? Yeah, definitely. So that's a great question. And that's something kind of we talk about um, every day practice, every day before games. We just try to always focus on like the present. And if we're in a game and things are going our way, We'll have a timeout. It'll be the end of the quarter or something, and we'll just be like, next five minutes, like next goal has to be ours. Like We kind of just start from where we're at. We don't want to um, get ahead of ourselves. We don't want to – if we're – there's there's been some games we start off slow, and we just all kind of come together. We're like, we got to turn around now. So I think our team has done a really good job of not waiting too long. I feel like years in the past we've kind of had very slow starts and not picked it up until the end and then it was too late. So that's kind of usually what happened last year at UConn and the year before. So I think this year we kind of just do a really good job of realizing that we need to put our foot on the gas a lot earlier and that just gives us um, even more of a boost and kind of gets our momentum up right from the start. You mentioned um, slow starts you know, mm-hmm. a little bit. Um, team but um you know i guess looking at like no there wasn't a national ranking last year obviously number 25 in um the il woman poll and Mm -hmm. number 19 now in um u.s lacrosse magazine but going back to your um personal you notice the team shifts overall Mm -hmm. what changes have you noticed in your own game which have honestly um made you a front runner for first team all mac as you were selected as a preseason all mac Mm -hmm. nominee yeah i definitely just think um I've just I'm a lot like I said before I I definitely think I'm a lot more confident player but I want like our team to do well obviously but I think on the field that just just being there to kind of guide people what to do and like kind of help them um, if they're struggling I think every single person on our offense works well off of each other so I think say if I'm having a good game if Libby's having a good game we all kind of build off of that and then other people start to shine or roll, um, vice versa roles reversed it's just kind of we all feed off of each other so I think in my role personally I've kind of just tried to be there more for everyone and if someone messes up we just we always say on attack like next one we got that so we don't dwell we don't like to dwell on the mistakes so I think just kind of that attitude personally and as a team has just really helped us on offense specifically yeah um kind of again going back to like Mac conference play starting um obviously at the beginning of the season having the schedule that we you had you had mm-hmm. has there been a kind of mindset shift or or if it's just been the same mindset since game one after holy cross yeah so I definitely think our mindset shifted a lot after holy cross I think we kind of needed that game in a way to kind of remind us, like I said earlier, that no team, we, we can't take any team for granted. So I, th- But I think after that game, our, our mindset changed, and it's kind of been the same the whole time because we just, our mindset now, we just kind of know we're a very good team and we need to act like it kind of in a way. Like we need to have that confidence. We need to have that chip on our shoulder. So I do think after that loss, we realized um, – we're, we can play so much better. We have so much more potential. And I think we've kind of had that idea in the back of our mind. So for every single game, it's it's definitely been a challenge. Every game has been a challenge. But I think we, we're just able to rise and have that confidence and kind of believe in each other to do so. So I definitely think there has been a shift for the better there. Um, you mentioned that game against uh, Holy Cross. That was the first game of the season all mm-hmm. the way back in February 10th, which honestly feels like um, forever ago. But mm-hmm. I want to go back, like, you know, post-game you were mentioning. Mm-hmm. Did – after that game, like in the locker room, what did there like a collective mm-hmm. consensus? If you will, like there was something special. Like mm-hmm. this year feels different. Like type of mentality. Yeah, a hundred percent. I think after the game, everyone we all kind of looked around. We're like, we're so much better than what we just showed. Like we, no one turned on each other, which was huge. Like I feel like in years past, we would be just kind of so upset and like down in the dumps, but. This year after um, that loss, we just kind of looked around. We're like, we got this. Like, next game. Like, we just kind of – we knew we messed up, but we moved forward from it. And I think that dynamic is just so different this year. I think every single person on our team, all we want to do is win and just keep proving to ourselves that we are a talented team. So I definitely think um, our just dynamic and chemistry is is very strong this year. Um, Yeah, and – with this schedule, with the uh, with the wins, how has it felt to be a part of kind of like such a historic team mm-hmm. with the two ranked wins and just the way you are playing right now, just seeming like almost 
unstoppable at points. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's been it's been awesome, but it's also been so rewarding. Like this is something we have worked for all fall, kind of all year, all summer, just to kind of get to this point. And I think every year, this is how this is what we strive for. And I think now it's paying off. I think. Um, every single person, like I said, has the same mindset, which has kind of made this possible. And our coaches have the same mindset. I think everyone just believes in each other, which is bringing us to the next level. So it's it's been it's been great. It's been um, very rewarding. You mentioned you know it's, you're feeling different. Were there um, like I know like there's a lot of behind the scenes things that mm-hmm. go on, whether that's like looking at film, you know, working at um, extra like shoot arounds or just like practices mm-hmm. to get loose. Has there been um, kind of like a sense of urgency? Like, let's say, if you will, because, you know, a nationally mm-hmm. ranked team, you know, that puts a weight kind of mm-hmm. on um, the team, if you will. So has have you seen the team's urgency like and there has been like more, um, I guess, more committed and like mm-hmm. invested in like the play? And have you seen that um, enhanced chemistry in mm-hmm. a way? Yeah, I do think so. I think our practices have gotten a lot more focused. I think. Ever since we've had those huge wins, we kind of we go outside and we still have a good time, but we also are more kind of locked in and dialed in, kind of what you're saying. We just know that every single thing we do during practice, in film, um, scouting other teams is just going to help us and it's for the best. So I think once we um, kind of sit down to watch film, sit down to go over scout for other teams, we just every, – every single person's dialed in, every single person's focused. There's no, like, funny business. We're all kind of – just excited for the next opportunity we get so I definitely think that's changed now what does like let's say um like a typical let's say like you mm-hmm. have your game tomorrow versus Iona what has the week looked like since um maybe Sunday or Monday mm-hmm. and kind of like preparation after that game versus Niagara just to give insight yeah definitely so um mon- so if we have a game Wednesday Monday Tuesday we usually we have film on Monday from our past game so we kind of go over Niagara see what worked well see what didn't uh, then during practice, we um, we have we go over offense for a while. We go over defense, so we kind of rep their um, defense, rep their offense for the offense and defense, just so kind of everyone could be on the same page for that and kind of know what to expect during the game. And then today, we'll kind of keep up with that. We'll just do um, scout teams, so we'll have certain people on offense kind of rep their players, so our defense is used to it, vice versa, and. Everything we do in practice leading up to games has a purpose, and our coaches do a good job of telling us that beforehand so we know what to expect. Uh, you know, obviously, mm-hmm. Sacred Heart um, and Merrimack are in the MAC conference um, as of right now. You know, you've had played Sacred Heart in the past. Um, how has the team responded to um, the team fully in the MAC conference as it's going to expand to 12 teams? Yeah, so that's that was definitely a lot to take in. We're going to have a lot of teams next year. Um, to play, but we're we're familiar with those teams, so I think our team um, for the next year and next chance we get to play all 12 teams, I think we're just kind of going into it, um, kind of what we said, like with the chip on our shoulder, we kind of know what to expect from every team, but we also don't, so we need to just be aware, and um, I think everyone's just excited for more opportunities. All right, I think that is going to do it for this edition of Stags in the Studio. Thank you, Elizabeth Toluto, once again for joining us. Thank you guys for having Uh, me. Thanks to Big Mike for stepping in here for this edition. Uh, We will see you soon. Have a great Easter break.